Creating a discussion topic in Canvas. Discussion topics in Canvas are basically bulletin boards where anyone in the class can post a message, everyone in the class can read it, and everyone can reply to the posts that have already been made. Discussions are accessed under the Discussions tool in the course menu. And in the upper right hand corner of this page, there is a button that will allow you to add a discussion to your course. If you click that, you first have to give the discussion topic a title. In this case, we'll make this a Q&A form. This is a classic discussion topic that allows students to ask questions of the instructor and of each other in the course and to receive help from the instructor or in many cases from their peers so that you as the instructor may be relieved of the necessity to reply to everything in here. This is much more efficient than replying to student requests for help through the inbox tool where you may have to answer the same question 10 times. If you do this in a discussion topic, you only have to do it once. So, once we name the topic, we have to provide some instructions to the students on what this is used for and what actions are expected on their part. In this case, we might say use this form to ask questions about the course. Please feel free to help out your peers if you know the answer to their question. It is possible to attach a file to your instructions here. If you have more complex instructions that you already have typed out on a Word document or something, but that's by no means required. There are several options among which you can choose in creating a discussion topic. The one you'll almost certainly want to pick is allow threaded replies. This causes related posts to be grouped together. So if someone posts and then another person answers and replies to that post, then perhaps another person replies to the reply, those posts will be grouped together and, and the relationship between them indicated. Another useful one you may want to use is users must post before seeing replies. What that means is that in a situation where you're asking students to make a specific type of post, they can't see everyone else's posts until they create their own initial post. This prevents people from just riffing off their peers. I'm not going to worry about podcast feeds here. It is possible to have this discussion topic be graded to award grades for participation. If you select that, you get some extra options down here. And you can also turn this into a mini Facebook, if you like, by allowing liking. You can tell from my tone of voice how I feel about that. Discussions can be set up for student groups so that only certain subgroups of your student population can participate. That may or may not be appropriate, depending on whether you use student groups or not. You, as usual, when something is graded, you have the options, the usual options, for displaying the grade in the grade book. Points is the default, by, and by far the most common. And if you are grading this discussion, you can put the graded discussion in a, a, an appropriate assignment group, if you use assignment groups. I don't have one here for graded discussions, but I could create one if I needed to, right from this page, if that fit with my grading scheme. <clears throat> I can require peer review, though that's a little less valuable probably than it is for assignments. 
And then finally, I have the usual assign to block here where I can decide to assign to subsets of the course if I wish, subsets of the student population. I can set due dates and availability dates. If I don't want participation in the discussion after the due date, I can set that. And I can create multiple assigned blocks just as I can for assignments that allow me to vary access by time to these groups to, to different sets of students. Not usually something you do with a discussion topic. So that's the process of creating a discussion topic. Once you're happy with your decisions, you just save it or save it and publish it if you want it available right away. And it becomes a part of your discussion board, your list of discussion topics. There's the latest one. The discussions by default are listed in the order of their creation. If you want a discussion always pinned to the top of your list, if you have a lot of discussion topics and you want certain ones featured at the top always, you can pin them. You do that by just dragging them up into the pinned discussion area. And I can have as many up there as I like. And once I have them in the pinned discussion area, I can change the order in which they are listed. To see what a discussion topic looks like after it's had some participation, let's look at this older icebreaker discussion here, another classic type of discussion topic. Here we have the instructions. If there are a lot of posts, we can search for particular topics or particular authors in the list without having to scroll through it and just look for them. For instance, I want to See if anyone talked about skydiving in here. I can type that and sure enough, there's a post dealing with skydiving. You can view only posts that you have not previously read by clicking the unread button. You can show replies that may have been deleted from the uh, system if you need to. Only you can do this as the instructor. This is useful. You can view ones that have been deleted in case someone posts something inappropriate, leaves it up there for a minute, and then deletes it. By default, the posts are fully visible, but you can collapse them so that you have a more compact list of posts to scroll through, and then you can expand them again to actually read them. By default, when you create a discussion topic, you are subscribed to it. Students have the option to subscribe or not. What that gives them, if they subscribe, is the ability to go into their notification settings in Canvas and set things up so that whenever a post is made to this discussion topic, they get an email with the post in it. They'll know that the, a post has been made, and they'll know that they can go in and reply to it, should they wish, and of course read the post in the process. To actually post to the discussion forum, you use this reply button here, right underneath the, the instructions and this toolbar here would be preferable in many ways if this said post instead of reply. You are in effect replying to the prompt that has been placed here. But to reply, one simply clicks there and you're presented with the full rich content editor, which means that you can not only type a reply here, but you can also include images, links, media, video, audio, full documents. Uh, you have the complete power of the rich content editor when you're making discussion posts. This greatly increases your instructional options for use of discussion topics. And you can attach files to your discussion posts. So this is a way that students, for instance, could share their work with the class by attaching a computer file to their post. To view the posts in the topic, you just scroll down.
since we selected, when creating this discussion topic, we selected enable threaded replies, we see displays like this here, where this was the original post, this is a reply to the original post, and you can see that, by the way, it's indented underneath the original post, and you have this little gray area here to call your eye to that. This post was a reply to this reply, and you can have several levels. This post was a reply to the first post up here, and so on. So that threading allows you to follow a discussion even though these posts all occurred at different times. You can go back later after the all the posts are in, or at any time, and follow a discussion as it develops. So this gives the, po the discussion topic much more utility in an instructional sense. So that is basically the process of creating a discussion topic in Canvas.